are opting out. They are opting out from uh, the onshore to the offshore fields, and the Nigerian companies are taking them over. Uh, companies like uh, Aito and all the rest of them, Oando, they have been doing very wonderful things in this direction, and that, and that is what we need. Uh, one good thing that the uh, government has done is to develop local capacity, because uh, if we don't play in that industry, uh, it's, it's an economic loss. Uh, where jobs will be provided, uh, uh, good income can be made, and part of what the government is spending in that sector can be retained within our system. It is a good policy that the government has adopted. Uh, nothing can be better than it. For a long time, it was difficult for local shipping firms to be involved in, in crude oil affrightment because of the freight on board uh, trade terms that government entered into with foreign buyers of crude oil. What are the main issues here? Capacity is still an issue. It's it's still still an issue. An issue. Uh, apart from the fact that uh, the uh, trade uh, arrangement that the government because I think what we adopted in our own is, uh, is uh, uh, the buyers of the crude bring the vessels in, and that is a massive loss of revenue. Uh, I believe government cannot do everything in one day. Uh, and I believe the shipping, uh, it's a good area for us to make a lot of impact, in, uh, especially in the West African sub-region. Nigeria is a great country, and I can tell you over 60 percent of the assets of this country is in the sea. So we have no choice than to develop that sector. Uh, we are making push uh, to ensure that government is, uh, is, is uh, in coming years able to change uh, the, the, the models operandi in that, in that sector. We have, let me tell you, mm -hmm. These vessels are not cheap. You're talking about VLCC, for instance. A VLCC, an average VLCC will cost over $100 million. And every day you spend money on a, on a ship every minute because the engine must run. So, uh, and we, 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 we have abandoned that sector also for a long time. I mean, for the first time in the history of Nigeria, since uh, the Moribond uh, National Line went Moribond, uh, the first time, uh, you know, when we launched uh, one of our companies, launched uh, our vessel, that is the only time we ever brought vessel of that capacity that is registered in Nigeria. Every big vessel come out of, they come here to come and trade, and we lose money both in terms of training our crew or training our young ones to be able to go into that sector to find job. We also lose uh, other trading act benefits, activities that are uh, attachable to that industry. Bunkering uh, of vessels, not done here. Uh, water is not done here. So a lot of all these activities, because we are not domesticating ownership of such big vessels. Uh, I believe uh, the economy is growing. And as it continues to grow, businessmen will look at these areas and will see there is massive opportunity in this area. And I believe government is a listening government we have. You talked about the Nigerian National Shipping Line a while ago. It was liquidated in Nigeria Airways. We hear that your company is applying for the national carrier status. Are you? Yes, <laughs> madam. Yes, we are. Uh, but. Uh, we are still at the elementary stage. Uh, I mean, what we're doing, we are contributing our quota in that sector. Uh, we are developing that sector very rapidly. We have a couple of uh, vessels of varying degree uh, on the high sea, both doing local and international trading activities. And uh, we will, in our group, we like, we like partnership. So we're in partnership with uh, Pacific uh, 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 Pacific uh, Drilling, uh, Atlantic Shipping, that is uh, owned by an Israeli billionaire. So we want to play in that space, uh, but we are not at the stage yet of the national li license. We are in the process, and uh, we will uh, 
you you get to know when when we are right there. You know, corruption is a broad term that spans a wide variety of situations: bribes, extortion, speed money, and so forth. There obviously is a lot of pressure on businessmen, from politicians especially. How difficult is it not to succumb to these pressures, especially when one is involved in so many high-profile businesses that need government facilitation? Well, I don't know what you mean by government facilitation. Uh, Bayer put out, put out. Uh, we we don't we we are not a, a contracting company. We do PPP with government, public-private partnership. I'm just talking in general terms. I'm not. Uh, zeroing down on your business. How well, difficult is it for business? Well, I, so I can only speak about my experience. And my experience has been, I've been con our system has been completely insulated from any bribery whatsoever because we don't pay for anything that we don't believe it is, there is, uh, there is, uh, that, it, that it cannot be put in the books. And we don't bribe. We do our business above board. Uh, our books are always open. For others, I cannot speak for them. I know, I read in the paper, uh, different papers, and uh, on, the, uh, on the screen, we also watch instances of such. But uh, I, I, the point is this, where for me, uh, personally, for instance, uh, a situation where I cannot exhibit what I believe in, I rather don't, don't go into it. So for us, I cannot justify a situation where I will give money to any public officer for doing anything. Uh, that is what you are engaged to do. That is what you are employed to do. Uh, it is for the service of our country. Uh, you either, if you want to join us in business, leave where you are and cross to the other side. But if you want, because in the other side, where we are, you are not sure of maybe you will remain in business because there is no guarantee of profit. So it's a risk. So if you want to come this side, then you are coming to the side where there is no guarantee. If you want to go to the other side where your salary is guaranteed, then you must play according to the rules. And that is the principle I believe in, and uh, that is the principle that guides us. What is it in your background that prepared you for where you are in life now? Well, it's interesting. I, I give glory to God Almighty for making me who I am. And I give all the glory and love to my parents, who are late now. But uh, I thank them for the way they have brought me up. Uh, and I thank God for giving me the spirit not to deviate from what they have taught me. Mr. Chindia, we thank you for your time, sir. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Madeleine. And we thank you for watching. Please join us again next time when View from the Top returns. But between now and then, let's continue the conversation online at channelstv.com, where you also see previous editions of our program.